my opinion, that's like taking a disease like diabetes and taking one symptom like chronic thirst and calling it chronic thirst syndrome, and then even dropping the S word and calling it chronic thirst. How's that chronic thirst coming along, you know? Um, or chronic coughing syndrome for tuberculosis, um, and then just calling it chronic cough. It is so important to convey to the public um, the scientific nature of this disease because if we can get the media behind us, um, I think we'll start to see responsible reporting and subsequent money to research this disease. And when we talk about educating um, the CDC um, and media awareness campaigns, I think we should talk about media coaching for some of the federal health agency officials who make statements or address the press club um, because there's such buzzwords out there that are so hurtful um, to the patient community. We can do a better job at communicating um, this disease uh, with particular word choice and presenting it in a positive way and addr addressing it by its real name, which is ME or chronic fatigue syndrome. So that's all I have to say today, and thank you for the opportunity to say it. Thank you, Ms. Holderman. And with the chair's indulgence, let us go on to Mr. Albert Donay, uh, who is also here, and uh, we appreciate your patience and sort of hanging in that Balance of uncertainty. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm sorry I had to leave early yesterday and missed my opportunity then. I'm an environmental health engineer and toxicologist. I'm also the founder of MCS Referral and Resources in 1994. One of the things we have researched since uh, the founding of that organization, and Dr. Jason has also uh, been involved in similar research, is the overlap of chronic fatigue syndrome, multiple chemical sensitivity, fibromyalgia, irritable bowel syndrome, et cetera. My testimony today is to urge you to urge the secretary and Dr. Kitt, who will follow as the head of the uh, special emphasis panel, to require researchers who are presumably interested in CFS to be sure that they are actually studying CFS. We heard yesterday about the characterization of the patients in the XMRV study, and while indeed they were excellently characterized for CFS, they met both the FACUDA and the Canadian definitions. The study was unable to assess their comorbidities. We don't know what percentage also had fibromyalgia, multiple chemical sensitivity, irritable bowel syndrome, et cetera. We do not, most importantly, know what percentage had pure CFS without these comorbidities. And without knowing that, we can only look to the literature and assume that like any other <laughs> clinic population, the pure tails were the minority of cases that were recruited for this study. The majority of cases in any chronic fatigue syndrome clinic have one or more of these comorbidities. I'm not suggesting that researchers be told what to study, simply that whatever their study design, they be required to assess these comorbidities and to report the results in terms of those comorbidities. Now, obviously, if they're a CFS researcher, we hope they'll be interested in recruiting and reporting a pure CFS cohort within their study. When I did a pure MCS study of immunology uh, a decade ago, our funders were adamant, get those pure MCS cases. We couldn't find enough to study. Fortunately, they allowed us to go forward characterizing the extensive overlap with chronic fatigue and uh, with fibromyalgia. We don't know yet if there's one elephant in the room. Maybe there's three elephants in the room. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Donay. And thank you to all the commenters for honoring the uh, time and for uh, making your comments available to everyone. Um, okay, I will turn things back to uh, Chairman Oleski and uh, see where you go from there. While you're gathering your thoughts, we have distributed to the committee and have put on the table in the back, sadly, because I did this, not the professionals. I came in early and the machine, the copy machine was jammed. When I got it unjammed, put paper in it, I put the thing in backwards. 
So it looks like the front page is blank. This is the listing of CIFSAC recommendations in September 2004, sorted by focus area, agency, and progress. Uh, should be on the table in the back, and just indulge us. I did not want to waste paper. Just flip that page over. It will show you page one, and bear with it. We have given this to the committee, and um, you know some committee members uh, may want to discuss this, but I did want to at least update yesterday. We don't, we, unfortunately, I left my copy upstairs. Okay, take this one. Um, and there are some, but yeah, of course, it's the same copies. Um, and just because I did report numbers yesterday, we had a total of 38 recommendations that we reported on the performance web. And what we reported um, was analysis earlier this year, and it has actually been updated and is reflected on this table. So um, we are showing that 11 of those 38 recommendations um, showed uh, yes as a progress note. This is all performance web requests, and then whether we expect progress, we noted another 10. So that's 21 out of 38 of the committee's recommendations since 2004. So um, I wanted to be sure that the committee members all have this document and that uh, attendees are aware of it on the table in the back, and then I'm going to turn things over to Dr. Oleski. Uh, thank you very much. Um, we have uh, some time to make for general discussion, but then we are going to have the um, special special emphasis pa panel coming at, 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 at eleven. Is Jerry Holmberg from Blood Safety? Okay. So, so at what time is that going to be? Eleven. You have about a half hour. All right. We have about. Uh, I think it'd be worthwhile then to um, have the the committee. Look at what Wanda has put. And Morris remembers had his hand up. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. That's right. Uh, during the uh, 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 testimony from our community, uh, the rules have been that during each presentation there would be no questions um, allowed. That could be changed, I guess, if the group wanted to do that. But Morris, you had a question after one of the speakers. Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, uh, during Dr. Mizell's uh, presentation, he talked about the trial that was presented at the uh, conference. It was at the, at the uh, international conference. Yeah. D do you have – was that, that publication published? Was that uh, study published? Abstract. Is there a paper yet, Lee? It was very promising. And remember, this is a new drug. It's not Valcite or Valgang cycle. It's a that. different one. But I, I was looking for the, for the data. No, there's in trial. There was an abstract for the, the ICAT conference. Um, and there's probably some information on the ICAT website, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, no papers have been studied Who, who's yet. Who's the first author? Do you know? What's that? The first author. Who presented? Uh, Hank Balfour made the go. presentation from the University of Minnesota. Okay, I think that's important for people to have so they can uh, adequately assess the study. Okay, yeah, it's not, uh, there's no publication yet, but there will be. Okay. We'll, we'll try to get a link to that abstract if it's on the ICAC 